Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Ever since I first started building electronic devices, I've always loved building things using high voltage. But up until this point, I've been limited by one major factor in my voltage that I can generate in my high voltage projects. And that is the flyback transformer of a cathode ray tube television. And my voltage has been mainly limited to about 35,000 volts maximum on my ZVS driver that has a 48 volt input voltage. That's because that's just about the max these flyback transformers can provide. Now, I have used a Tesla coil to generate maybe a slightly higher voltage at a very low current. Now, there's another way to generate a much higher voltage than the voltage provided at this flyback transformer. And that is by using something called a Marx generator, which uses a series of resistors, capacitors, and spark gaps, actually a ladder more like, to generate a higher voltage. So, let's take a look at a schematic diagram for a Marx generator, and we'll see if we can build one. So this is a schematic of a Marx generator. Now one thing you need to know about your Marx generators is that they come in multi-stages. This is only three stages, so the voltage is only going to be multiplied three times. But you can multiply it more by adding more stages. Now let's take a look at how this is going to work. So we're going to have an input voltage of 20 to 30,000 volts, or whatever your power supply can handle. So what that's going to do is it's going to charge all these capacitors through a series of resistors. Now each of these resistors is going to be rated at one mega ohm, and what's going to happen is because you have a voltage potential on this side through these resistors, and voltage potential on this side through these resistors, it's going to charge all three of these capacitors to that same voltage. Let's just say 15,000 volts. Now what's going to happen is once all these capacitors have reached the breakdown voltage of this mini spark gap in between the capacitors, it's going to all short together. And so this capacitor is going to discharge through the spark gap into this capacitor, and it's going to zigzag its way up here, up until the output voltage point. Now the cool thing about this is it's basically putting the voltages from all three of these capacitors in series. And so what that's doing is it's charging these capacitors in parallel and discharging them in series, and that is going to generate a voltage that's a multiple of the amount of capacitors times the input voltage. And so depending on how many stages we can put, we can have a voltage multiplier that can multiply the input voltage by a very large factor. And so we're going to be building something like this. Let's start out by using this schematic diagram to build a Marx generator that has three stages. And after that, we'll move on to building one that has more stages so we can generate larger arcs. Now for this project, I'm going to be using a few different things. I'm going to use some of these one mega ohm resistors that I got from LCSC components. I'll put a link to the description. It's a really good component supplier. We'll also be using some of these capacitors. And these capacitors, as you may have seen in my previous video, were used in a Tesla coil capacitor bank, but they were not able to withstand all those charges and discharges, and they did not work that well. So these capacitors will function a lot better inside my Marx generator. These were Russian capacitors, and they're about 400 picofarads or 0.4 nanofarads, and these capacitors are rated at 15,000 volts. To build this simple three-stage uh, Marx generator, I will use these five resistors and these three capacitors, and this should hopefully give us three times the input voltage of the ZVS driver, which will be really cool. Oh, that is not good. Oops, well, it looks like I burnt up some resistors. I think my spark gaps are too close together. Gotta fix that. All right, I'm gonna give this uh, Mark generator another run. I expanded the spark gap and I replaced all the capacitors that caught fire. Let's see how well this works now, running at low power. Oh, you know what? It really helps to plug in your device when you're trying to do something. Novel thought. Just a second, let's give this. Ooh. Now if I greatly expand that spark gap, we may get some more power out of this thing. Alright, let's give this thing a run again. Ooh, that's pretty good. Oh, holy crap. That's not good. Well, as you can see, 
uh, maybe the spark gaps were too big. I'm going to have to make some more prototypes of this and, of course, replace those two resistors. I'm going to run out of resistors by the time I'm finished with this. Then I'll make some more stages. But as you can see, that works pretty good. Here we go. I'm going to give this thing a little test. At high voltage, this is a three-stage amplifier. As you can see, I'm getting some pretty long arcs from just three capacitors. Now, let's see what happens when we add a lot more. And let's say uh, we'll have six capacitors next. So as you can see, this is my Marx generator, and it's gigantic. So from top to bottom, it is composed of about 15 stages with 15 spark gaps, 15 capacitors, and 31 mega ohm resistors. This is a very cool machine. Oh, sorry about that. I was just charging a battery. That means the battery is charged. All right, let's take a closer look at how I built this thing, because on the surface it looks really complicated, but it really isn't. So first of all, what I did is I cut this piece of particle board into a big section. Then I marked and put nails every nine centimeters along this thing, so that way the resistors could fit in between there, and the capacitors would be adequately spaced far apart from each other as to not arc and mess up like that. So each of the nails is nine centimeters apart, and each of the capacitors is nine centimeters apart. And so what I did is I soldered a resistor onto each nail and in between, I soldered a capacitor in between each nail, and I put these spark gaps in between uh, the nails diagonally. All right, enough now with the talking. Let's fire this thing up and see what it looks like when it runs. Let me plug it in to my Variac transformer and fire it up. Hopefully nothing goes wrong. That's pretty cool. Now let's take a look at this thing running up close. So I'm going to make a little montage with some music of this thing running. And here you go. Enjoy. Now this Marx generator, as cool as it may be, didn't turn out exactly how I wanted it to. I expected this Marx generator, especially because it has 15 stages, to put out arcs as big as 5 or 6 inches, but my arcs weren't that big. They were only maxed out at about 2 inches. Now I think the reason behind this is just because of my capacitors. These capacitors are only about 400 picofarads, which is 0.4 nanofarads. And in some schematics that I've seen online of this device, uh, they use capacitors rated at 2 nanofarads or more. So I think maybe if I had bigger capacitors, this thing may function better. Another problem that I see with this device is maybe the resistors. Now I've seen some schematics that use resistors of 1 mega ohm, like I'm using, but I've also seen some schematics use resistors of higher values, like 5 mega ohms or even 10 mega ohms. And so that could be contributing to my problem because it allows the spark gaps in the bottom to fire prematurely and it just doesn't let the capacitors reach their full charge value before it arcs. So there are many different ways that I could make my Marx generator better, but I currently don't have the supplies, I don't have new capacitors, and I don't have new resistors. So for now, this is my Marx generator. Sometime in the future, I will definitely look into making it more high-powered and a lot better. But for now, thanks for watching.